Hi, welcome back to my lab. Uh, this is a quick follow-up concerning this ASQ 504 magnetic anomaly detector. Today we will have a look on this high frequency board. For that purpose I have done the complete reverse engineering of the three boards of that device. This is the schematic of the high frequency board. So this is actually a high frequency oscillator. The amplitude can be controlled by this DC voltage. The oscillator is here, so there is an output stage. The output is this coaxial cable, this one here. This board is supplied by a 24 volt power supply, which is provided by this voltage regulator, LM117. This is this part here. The output of this oscillator is fed to the head. The control of the amplitude is provided by the output of this op-amp. So this is an amplifier. There are two inputs. The main input is this one. It is connected to this integrator. And the second input here is connected to an adjustment. There is a voltage reference provided by this inner diode. It is probably a 6.2 volts reference voltage. The input of the integrator is this differential voltage between the terminals E1 and E2. These are these two wires, black and yellow here. This is the shielded cable, as we can see. And the shielded cable is also connected to the head. This circuit permits to control the output power. So there should be a sensor inside the head here. So I don't know which kind of sensor it is. And there is also a comparator here. Actually it is an open, but it is used as a comparator. The so one input is a constant voltage provided by the voltage reference here. And the second input is connected to the output of the integrator. This output gives an indication of the stabilization of the loop. When the integrator voltage here is too high, the output goes to high level. So it is possible to test this circuit, at least to see if this thing is stabilized and what is the output frequency. So I guess that this circuit permits to drive the cesium discharge lamp. This should be an electrodeless discharge lamp. In that case, the discharge is performed using a coil, which should be around the lamp. And the coil is energized by this high frequency signal. And there should be a control of the output power using a sensor, which is connected here to the input of the integrator. So it is possible to measure the frequency of this oscillator. So I have connected the board to a 28 volts power supply between the wires red and black. These are these two wires here. So for that purpose, I will use the spectrum analyzer. I have prepared this instrument here. And I will use also a magnetic field probe. And this is this one, the Hameg HZ530. Okay, so I will connect this probe to the spectrum analyzer. I am going to turn on the spectrum analyzer. Okay, I am going to turn on the power supply. Okay, the current is approximately 500 milliamps. Okay, I turn on the probe. Okay, so we can see that we have effectively a high frequency signal. The peak is approximately at 98 megahertz. I will change the frequency limits. Okay. Okay, you can see that we have a peak at 99.2 MHz. It can be interesting also to check if we have zero volt between these two terminals. Okay, so I will use the DMM, which is here. Okay, so we have something which is effectively closed to zero. We can check also the voltage. Here, for example, this is this resistor, 100 ohm, and we have 3.14 volts at this point here. Yeah, 
We can check also the voltage as the output of the integrator. 5.44. Okay, so we can check the limit here. At this point, uh, this reference voltage, pin 9 of the op amp, 5.82. Okay, so the reference voltage is probably 6.2 volts. Let's have a look. 6.23. Okay, and we should find the 24 volts here. 23.2. Let's have a look on the head itself. The coaxial cable here and uh, this uh, shielded cable are connected uh, to the head. They are connected actually to that thing here. So we can see this clear cable corresponds to the input and the other one corresponds to the output of the amplifier. So this is probably the cesium lamp. So let's remove this thing. Okay, so let's have a look. A bingo. As you can see, we have effectively an electrodeless cesium lamp. Okay. So we can see here a cell which contains cesium 133 vapor. And we can see that we have effectively a high frequency coil around this cell with, I don't know, 10 turns or something like that. So this coil is connected normally to the output of the oscillator. So this is this cable here. It is effectively connected here. So we have the inner wire here. It is connected to the coil through these two devices in parallel. I am looking for the magnifier. These two parts are actually resistors. One is 3.3 ohms, second one, I don't know. I try to measure like that. Actually, these are not resistors, but capacitors. And this is probably a capacitor, which permits the resonating system. The input of the integrator is connected to this part, so this is strange. I try to make a zoom on this part. I don't know exactly what is this sensor. It is a black square thing. It is maybe a high frequency diode or something like that, which permits the generation of the small voltage. But the problem is that it is connected directly to the input here. So normally we should have zero volts between these two terminals here. So I don't know exactly how this thing works. And we can see that we have also two other cables. So this is uh, these two very thin brown wires. Okay, so we can see that there is a small hole here. And these two wires are connected to something. But I don't know what. Okay, so let's try to turn on the power supply to see if we have an elimination of this cesium lamp. Yeah, it is the case. The color is between white and violet. Okay, it is possible to complete the schematic now. So we have a cesium cell here. There is a coil surrounding this cell. Okay, this coil is connected to two capacitors in parallel. Okay, and this thing is connected to the output of the high frequency generator here. Okay, this is the coaxial cable. And there is this mystery part 
Well, this is maybe a decoupling capacitor. In that case, it is connected to something inside. Or it is maybe a diode or something, but in that case, it is difficult because we should have zero volt DC here. But anyway, there is something here. Okay, and that thing is connected to the input of the integrator. Okay, and this is of course a shielded cable. Okay, so this is an electrodeless cesium discharge lamp. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time for the next episode. Bye bye.